the cases of Audrey and Daisy are definitely those of which parents fear, but for their families, that fear became a reality. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be talking about the true crime cases of Audrey Pott and Daisy Coleman. Um, these cases is what helped inspire the Netflix documentary Audrey and Daisy. Um, this is quite a controversial documentary and so is the follow-up documentary which we'll talk about a little bit when we get into the background of Daisy Coleman. But first I want to talk about Audrey Pott. So Audrey was born on the 27th of May of 1997 in California. Now at the time of her attack she was attending Saratoga High School in Saratoga, California. Um, so on the 3rd of September of 2012, Audrey went to a party at the home of Michael and Sheila Penuin. Um, now she went to this party and there was also some other teenagers there as well and she became highly intoxicated. Well, some of the party goers said that she was making out with two other boys at like when they saw them saw her with them but apparently some of the teenagers that were at this party stole some liquor and an adult actually bought liquor for them from the store and this was vodka to be exact. Well once she was in her intoxicated state this is when she was dragged up the stairs and brought into a bedroom. Now this unfortunately is when she would be sexually assaulted. So the boys that brought her up the stairs stripped her, then they proceeded to sexually assault her. Now, more specifically, there were three or more boy, fellow teenagers around her of which knew, like she knew them since middle school. Now, specifically during the attack on her, they drew on her body with marker, specifically around her genital area, and they took pictures of her while the attack was happening and while she was incapacitated. So, following this attack, these photographs were sent around via, like, multimedia messaging and on the different social media platforms, um, more specifically, like, Facebook and and specifically around the high school as well. So this started the trend of her being cyberbullied. Well, the cyberbullying was mainly through Facebook, and one of the messages that she received simply just stated, "You were, you were one horny mojo, huh?" So eventually, the cyberbullying became too much, and unfortunately, she committed suicide via hanging on the 12th of September of 2012 nine days after the assault happened on her. Now, don't get too ahead of yourself. You're thinking, hey, she killed herself, they're gonna investigate. Well, the investigation didn't start until April of 2013. I know, I know, why? Why exactly would this happen? But, the investigation started and it would lead to the arrest of three of the boys that were involved in the sexual assault against Audrey Pot. Well, I mean they were arrested on suspicion of sexual assault against her. So Audrey's parents ended up filing a lawsuit against all three of these boys in July of 2013 and also there was a girl that was added as a defendant um, in the lawsuit and allegedly this girl she was a 15 year old girl she was present during the attack when it was happening um, and she later lied to the police because she felt that she needed to help cover up what happened and help the boys that were involved in the sexual assault against Audrey. So all three of these boys were admitted to the juvenile court system for the sexual assault and possessing um, pictures of Audrey, which I'm sorry, to me, these are both um, felonies and 
what I'm about to tell you is probably going to make a lot of people angry. So two of the teen boys received 30-day sentences that would be served on weekends, and the other was sentenced to 45 consecutive days. These sentences were given as such due to their ages and them being minors at the time of the incident, as well as them not being publicly identified. I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. So in 2015, Audrey's parents filed a civil suit, and in this civil suit, it basically, they're suing the boys for them being at fault for her death. Basically, it's a wrongful death suit, and they want to make sure that the boys are ultimately responsible for the death of Audrey, which I mean they were, they drove her to her death. Well, this case was originally set to have gone to trial in April of 2015, but they settled prior to this. Now, some of the terms of the settlement um, is that two of the boys had to publicly apologize verbally in an open courtroom, admitting to the assault and to their role of the death of Audrey. They also had to agree to being filmed in the documentary, Audrey and Daisy, and they also had to agree to paying the amount of $950,000 to Audrey's parents. Also, um, they also had to support an honorary diploma for Audrey and give multiple presentations on how, like, sexual assault and on sexting and basically what happens. They had to give presentations on this. Now, why only two of them had to do this instead of three, I have absolutely no idea, but that's ultimately what they decided. Now, Daisy Coleman is our another, is our second person that I wanted to talk about in this, because obviously Audrey and Daisy. Now, Daisy Coleman was born on the 30th of March in 1997 to her parents, Melinda and Michael Coleman. She had three brothers as well, which two of them are very important in the story. Very important. Not that the third one isn't as well, but he's not really um, publicly mentioned. We'll say that. So... In 2009, when she, one of her brothers, and her father were traveling to another one of her brother's wrestling competitions, the car unfortunately hit a patch of black ice, and it went off in, into a ravine. Like, it went off the road and into a ravine. Now, because of this, her father tragically died. So, subsequently, after the death of her father, father her family had to move to Marysville, Missouri. Now, flash forward to January of 2012, 17-year-old Matthew Barnett was arrested on the charge of rape and sexual assault of Daisy Coleman. So, at the time of the actual, actual rape, Daisy was 14. So, there's also a 15-year-old boy as well that was arrested um, in connection of the rape of Daisy's friend, Paige Parkhurst. And there was a third boy um, that recorded the assault on a cell phone and would admit to doing so as an accomplice. Now, before the arrest, Matthew Barnett never spoke about what happened between him and Daisy. Never. He admitted that she was at the party and that um, what went on, he described that they had consensual sex, which is, from what I read, not the truth whatsoever. Um, so Daisy insisted that she was raped after he gave her so much alcohol that she was like basically incapacitated to the point where she couldn't like she couldn't function. So when she got to that point, he then carried her to a room in which he then assaulted her. And at the same time, her friend Paige also would be assaulted as well. Now, this party is one that her and Paige snuck out of, like, they were having a sleepover and they snuck out of the house to go to this party. So, there was a ton of controversy that happened when it came to this case. And in 2013, because the county prosecutor ended up dropping the charges against Barnett, 
and the Nottoway County prosecutor dropped the charge of felony sexual assault and se or felony sexual exploitation against the third boy, the one that recorded the assault. Now, because of this, it caused an uproar in the online communities as well as with Anonymous. Now, Anonymous is a decentralized activist in like, on, basically online. And all of this um, had the story coming back into the public and being, like, really in the forefront for people to see. Now, this case was also, like, revisited by Michael Schaefer, who reported on the case in um, The New Republic, and of which he described the Marysville, like, Missouri area as a lawless hellhole of a place because nothing was happening for Daisy. All the charges were dropped and nothing. So, in 2014, there was a specific prosecutor um, who ended up becoming in and in being involved in the case and reinvestigating it. Well, what they did is they ended up rearresting Matthew Barnett, and because of this, he ended up pleading guilty to second degree misdemeanor charge for endangering the welfare of a child because after he was done assaulting Daisy, what he did is he ended up taking her back to her house and leaving her on the front porch of the house. So this is where the endangering of the welfare of a child comes in. Now, he was then sentenced to four months um, in jail, but that was suspended in his favor um, to instead just serve two years of probation. So this sentencing, the sentencing happened through the juvenile court system for her sexual assault. So basically he just got off scot-free. He got off with a slap on the wrist. So in reflection, basically, Daisy went on to starting a nonprofit organization called Safe BAE Family. And this was with hopes of stopping sexual assaults in a school atmosphere and helping those that have gone through sexual assaults. So Daisy also became an activist and an advocate for sexual assault survivors, along with her brother Charlie. Um, she was also a very talented tattoo artist, of which she um, was working as one when she moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado in June of 2018. Uh, Daisy also helped with the documentary on Netflix called Audrey and Daisy, and of, because of this documentary, her, they received the 2016 Cinema Eye Honor, as this documentary was very unforgettable. Like... It was, it's something that has never come out before, and it's definitely, like, given a new light to cases like this in particular. So, Daisy then worked on a second film called Saving Daisy, and this is where it chronicles her process of her recovery, her post-traumatic stress um, disorder, and her usage of EMDR and CBD therapy for recovering from her assault. So after, after her sexual assault, uh, Daisy attempted to take her life multiple different times. Uh, and also be after the assault, she became the victim of cyberbullying. And this is what prompted her family to move from Marysville to Albany, Missouri, after the assault took place. And now what's even more odd about this is that her family's home in Nottoway and in Gentry County had suspicious fire damage, um, and this happened after the assault took place, which is super fishy as to why it was specifically their houses that it happened. Now, unfortunately, her brother Tristan would end up dying in a car accident at the age of 19, and this happened in June of 2018. So, I believe this happened around the time that she moved to Colorado Springs. But that wouldn't be the only tragedy that would hit the family either. On August 4th of 2020, Daisy ultimately ended her life via suicide. Um, she was 23 years old. And roughly about four months later, her mother Melinda also would kill herself via suicide. So no person will ever truly understand what it's like and what it, specifically what it's like to process um, going through something so dramatic in life. So 
somebody who's been a victim of sexual assault or rape or cyberbullying in an assault atmosphere, unless you yourself have gone through something similar, you will not understand what they have gone through or what their mindset might be. There will always be differences with some correlations, but it will never be specifically the same. So, um, no one deserves to go through what Audrey and Daisy went through, and no one deserves to not have justice for the crimes that were committed against them. Um, if you have not seen Audrey and Daisy, I highly recommend you to, to watch it, because it is eye-opening. Me, as a person that is a survivor of assault, it was very rough for me to watch it, but... It gets easier as time goes by. It really does. So it's also really eye-opening because what you think about society and what happens with teenagers in society now, uh, like what could be happening, but looks are deceiving and what you see is not always what it seems. Um, so that is the story of Audrey and Daisy. The memory of Audrey and Daisy will forever live on, and so will the hope that sexual assaults will not be just swept under the rug and people won't get slaps on the wrist. So I hope you guys learned something from this, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in a brand new video.